In this recording, we'll discuss cranial and spinal nerves. All right, so we have 12 cranial nerves to get through. First of all, we have the olfactory nerve. Okay, so for each of these, I have shown you images of these nerves on the models themselves. Okay, if you need to know these cranial nerves for lab as well, please make sure you refer to your lab resources to ensure you are studying the correct information. Okay. Um, so here we go. Your olfactory nerve is a sensory nerve. It is involved in the sense of smell. If we are concerned that your olfactory nerve has been damaged, we can test it by having you identify aromas. If you have, in fact, damaged your olfactory nerve, you will have a loss of smell. All right, number two is your optic nerve. This is also a sensory nerve. It controls your vision. Again, if we think your optic nerve may have been damaged, we can have you look at an eye chart and or we can have you identify when objects enter your visual fields. So like from your peripheral vision, okay, when your eye doctor brings his fingers around the sides of your face. Um, if you have damaged your optic nerve, oop, you will probably suffer from some sort of blindness, okay? And depending on if you only damaged one or both will depend on if it's just one eye or both eyes. All right, number three is oculomotor, okay? As the name itself implies, we are going to move your eyeballs. So this is a motor neuron that is responsible for helping you focus on images by helping your eyes move to adjust. Again, if we think this function has been damaged. We can perform the little pin light test to see if your iris constricts properly and we can see if your eyes will follow a moving object. So again, remember back to the last time you went to the eye doctor, um, they made you sit real still but only your eyes could move and follow the pin. That's what we're talking about here. If you have damaged your ocular motor uh, nerve, it is likely that you will suffer from double vision. Okay. Remember, because this is motor, this doesn't really um, lead to blindness, which would be a sensory function. This would just be double vision. So everything would be blurry. All right, trochlear nerve number four. This is, again, an eye movement function here. So we have the same tests. We have a pen light test and then the following the moving objects. And again, double vision would be our disorder here. Okay, so you have quite a few muscles that help your eyes move, so cranial nerve 3 and 4 both assist with those movements, okay? Now, trigeminal nerve number 5, okay? This is a big old nerve because we've got three parts to it, trigeminal is three parts. This is a mixed nerve, so we have both sensory and motor functions. The sensory functions include um, branches for pain, touch, and temperature to your face, okay? And then the motor function includes closing your jaw by contracting your masseter and or your temporalis muscle, okay? So we can feel things on your face and we can close your mouth. To test the function of your trigeminal nerve, we can do a couple of different tests since we have a couple of different functions. We can do the corneal reflex or the blink test. We can excuse me, we can determine if you can sense pain, touch, and temperature on your face. And then obviously we can test to see whether or not you are still able to open and close your mouth. Now, one of um, the disorders associated here, we've got a condition called tic dolore. If your trigeminal nerve becomes inflamed, this makes any um, touching of your face very, very painful. Even a very light touch is very, very painful. All right, your abducens, number six. This, um, again, we're back to eye movements. This moves your eye in a lateral motion specifically, okay? Um, our tests are what we're already familiar with for eye movement, pen light, and the following the moving objects. This disorder specifically would just be you can't move your eyes laterally because that was supposed to be the function, moving it laterally. So. It's kind of um, easy to forget that your eyes can do a lot of different movements. You can look up, down, you can look left, you can look right, but you can even kind of do all around uh, in almost basically a 360 degree circle. And so you've got three different cranial nerves that assist with um, the movements of your eyes. 
kind of tells you just how important your eyeballs are. All right, facial nerve number seven. We've got another mixed nerve here. You have sensory functions of taste and then motor functions of salivation, um, tear production, and this muscle helps you control your facial muscles. Okay, so think of things like your zygomaticus muscles, things like that. Um, to test this function, we can have you identify tastes, um, we can test your tearing ability, and we can test your facial symmetry. Okay, so if um, you try to move some of your facial muscles and it's not symmetrical on both sides, you may suffer from um, some sort of impairment of your facial nerve, which is what you see in Bell's palsy, okay, um, which is temporary facial paralysis. It kind of comes and goes. Stress can kind of um, hinder the abilities of your facial muscles. All right, number eight, your vestibular cochlear nerve. This one does equilibrium or balance and hearing. Okay, so this one's associated with your ears. We can test the uh, hearing ability with a tuning fork. Okay, and um, if you have damaged your vestibular cochlear nerve, you could suffer from deafness and or loss of balance. All right, almost done. Number nine, glossopharyngeal. This one again is mixed function. We have more taste sensation here, and we have um, swallowing motor functions as well as additional salivation functions. We have a gag swallow reflex test here, and so if you've damaged your glossopharyngeal nerve, um, it becomes difficult to swallow, and it becomes difficult to taste on certain parts of your tongue. Number 10 is your vagus nerve. Put a star by this one. Your vagus nerve is super important, okay? You are going to hear so much about your vagus nerve, okay? This one is a mixed nerve. We have sensory information coming from your visceral organs, okay? We'll send that information to your brain for processing. And then we have motor function as well. This controls your parasympathetic nervous system. We're going to stimulate your visceral organs as well. Um, we can do the gag swallow reflex test here as well, but our disorder is quite different. If you damage your vagus nerve, um, it, can, it can be really bad. It can lead to visceral organ disorders or even um, death. Okay? Your vagus nerve is super important. Cannot forget that one. All right, number 11, your accessory nerve. This one does motor innervations to your trapezius and your sternocleidomastoid muscle, which hopefully you remember help you move your shoulders. And so to test the function, we can see if you can rotate or shrug your shoulders. If you are unable to do that, you would suffer from some sort of neck or shoulder paralysis because you have damaged your accessory nerve somehow. And last but not least, your hypoglossal nerve, number 12. This controls your tongue, motor functions to your tongue. So not taste, this is motor control of your tongue. Um, we can test the function by having you stick your tongue out and put it back in your mouth, so protrude and retract your tongue. If you have damaged your hypoglossal, it becomes difficult um, to speak and to swallow. All right, and then just very quickly, since we are still discussing the peripheral nervous system, don't forget you also have spinal nerves. We mentioned previously that you have 31 pairs of these. Um, these innervate structures below the head and neck region, so anything above the head and neck, or well, I should say above, I should say the head and neck region, that would be the cranial nerves that we just mentioned, okay? We've mentioned the ventral root carries motor neurons, the dorsal root carries sensory neurons, and then the dorsal root ganglia uh, are the cell bodies of those sensory neurons. So just don't forget about those as well.